This presentation will focus on the different water quality sample collection techniques. It is important to understand sampling techniques, especially when considering if you want to submit data to the International BMP database, or if you'd like to supplement the data from the database with comparable data of your own. In this video, the difference between grab samples and composite samples will be discussed, as well as the difference between flow proportional and time proportional composite sampling methods. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the 2009 Stormwater BMP Monitoring Manual prepared by Geocentec Consultants and Wrightwater Engineers, which was the basis of the material in this presentation and is available for download on the International BMP Database website. The first water quality sample that will be discussed is the grab sample. The term grab sample refers to an individual sample collected within a short period of time at a particular location. A grab sample provides a snapshot of stormwater quality at a single point in time. The results of a grab sample generally are not sufficient to develop a reliable estimate of the event mean concentration for the pollutant load because stormwater quality tends to vary dramatically during a storm event. However, grab sampling has an important role in many stormwater monitoring programs for the following reasons. A single grab sample collected during the first part of a storm can be used to characterize pollutants associated with the first flush. The first part of a storm often contains the highest pollutant concentrations in a storm runoff event. The results from single grab samples collected during the initial part of the storm runoff may be useful for screening level programs to design to determine which pollutants, if any, are present at the levels of concern. Second, some measurable parameters such as temperature, pH, total residual chlorine, volatile organic compounds, and bacteria transform or degrade so rapidly that compositing can introduce considerable bias. Third, some pollutants such as oil and grease and total petroleum hydrocarbons tend to adhere to sample container surfaces so that transfer between sampling containers must be minimized. Finally, Grab sampling is the cheapest method for collecting a water quality sample. However, it is worth repeating that it is generally not sufficient to develop a reliable estimate of the event mean concentration. Another sampling approach is to collect a composite sample. A composite sample is a mixture of a number of individual sample aliquots. The aliquots are collected at specific intervals of time or flow during a storm event and combine to form a single sample for laboratory analysis. Composite samples may be generated by combining appropriate portions of several grab samples to form a single composite sample for analysis, but this is generally impractical. Many monitoring programs have found that the use of automated monitoring equipment and methods are more appropriate for compiling composite samples than manual monitoring. There are two basic approaches for obtaining composite samples and are referred to as time proportional and flow proportional. A time proportional composite sample is prepared by collecting individual sample aliquots of equal volume at equal increments of time during a storm event. For example, every 15 minutes as shown in the figure, and then mixing those aliquots to form a single sample for laboratory analysis. Time proportional samples do not account for variations in flow. Pollutant concentrations in sample aliquots collected during the portion of the storm with lower flows are also given the same weight as sample aliquots collected during higher flows. Consequently, time proportional composite samples generally do not provide reliable estimates of event mean concentrations or pollutant loads, unless the interval between sample aliquots is very brief and flow rates are relatively constant. Flow proportional composite samples are more suitable for estimating event mean concentrations and pollutant loads. A flow proportional composite sample can be collected in several ways. Method one is a constant time technique. Sample aliquots are collected at equal increments of time during a storm event. Varying amounts of each aliquot are then combined to form a single composite sample. The amount of water used for each aliquot is proportional to the flow rate at the time the aliquot was collected. The second method is also a constant time technique. Sample aliquots are once again collected at equal increments of time during the storm event, similar to method one. 
However, the amount of water removed from each aliquot is proportional to the volume of flow since the preceding aliquot was collected. The third and final method is a constant volume technique. Sample aliquots of equal volume are taken at equal increments of flow volume, regardless of time, and combined to form a single composite sample. The following graph displays each of the flow proportional composite sampling methods. Method 1 can be seen with the green markers, where at equal time increments a sample is collected whose volume is proportional to that of the flow rate when it was collected. Method 2 is displayed by the orange markers. For this method, aliquots are collected at equal time increments, but the volume of the aliquot is proportional to the volume of flow since the previous aliquot, or in this figure, proportional to the area under the curve between samples. Method 3 shows the constant volume technique, where the sample volume of each aliquot is the same, but the time that it is taken is set such that there is an equal volume of flow between each of the aliquots. The flow proportional method should be selected based on what is most appropriate considering the program, monitoring technique, and available equipment. Compositing methods 2 and 3 are more accurate than method 1 because methods 2 and 3 both use the total volume of flow to scale the sample volume. In contrast, method 1 uses a single instantaneous rate to estimate the flow over the entire sampling interval. However, for manual methods, compositing method 1 is generally the most practical choice. If automated equipment is to be used, method 3 is generally preferred because it minimizes the need for measuring and splitting samples, which are activities that can increase the chance for sample contamination. We will now work through an example to demonstrate the differences between sampling techniques. In this example, a student developed a plan to monitor a short storm by collecting samples every 10 minutes after the start of the storm. A grab sample was also collected near the beginning of the event. The samples were evaluated for total suspended solids. In addition to the samples, flow measurements were also recorded at each time interval. For this storm, the student was interested in determining how different sampling techniques could impact calculations on total TSS load delivered during the event. The results of the sample analysis and flow measurements are provided in the table. Now we will calculate the load of TSS that was delivered during the event using three different techniques for estimating the concentration of the storm. The first technique is the results of the grab sample. To calculate the load, the concentration of the grab sample is multiplied by the total volume of the storm providing a load of 1.47 kilograms. Next, we will calculate the load of TSS using a time-weighted concentration, which is comparable to creating a composite sample using the time proportional approach. For this method, each sample concentration is given equal weight regardless of the volume of flow. The average concentration during this event is 45.6 milligrams per liter. And by multiplying by the total volume of the event, we get a TSS load of 0 0.98 kilograms, approximately 33% lower than the load estimated using only the grab sample. Finally, we will calculate the load of TSS using a flow weighted concentration, which is comparable to creating a composite sample using the flow proportional approach, specifically method two. For this method, a flow weighted average of concentration was calculated to be 50.7 milligrams per liter. The load for the event was then determined to be 1.09 kilograms. This was approximately 25% lower than the estimate using the grab sample and 11% higher than the estimate using the time weighted approach. However, it can be assumed that this third value is the most reasonable load based on the method which was used. This concludes the presentation. Thank you.